We have athletics going first. Mr. Jones over here, um, he has to get to, what are you going to tonight? Swimming. Swimming out in Worcester. So um, he, has to, he has to get out of here very quickly. So he's actually going to kick off the night. And then we'll go through all of our departments. And um, after Mr. Jones is done, I'll go through, I'll sort of kick things off and talk about graduation requirements, credit requirements uh, for each subject. Uh, so we're going to get off and running. We already started off a little late. So I'll pass it on to Pete for now. Good evening, everyone. My name is Pete Jones. I'm the athletic director here at AMSA. Uh, I'm in my 11th year as an AD, and I'm in my fourth year here at AMSA. And I'd like to think athletics is going first tonight because it's important. That's, that's why I'm going first. A um, couple of quick things. I'll be very brief. As Mr. Naraka said, I do have a swim meet to get to in Worcester. Um, we are a member of the MIA. I think a lot of times people think because we're a charter school, we're not an MIA member. We are an MIA member. Um, there was a time when AMSA Athletics first began. They were in a, a charter school league. But at this point in time, we are a full-fledged MIA program. We're a member of the Colonial Athletic League, which is a league in Central Mass. Um, that has a lot of the tech schools like Worcester Tech and Assabit, Keefe Tech, Blackstone Valley Tech, Monty Tech. Um, and I think we're in a really good spot right now. It seems to be a really good fit for us. Um, 30 di 37 different programs, uh, excuse me, 37 different teams throughout 23 different programs. So there is a lot of offerings. I feel we have a robust athletic department. Um, and, and I think I want to stress tonight that there's something for everybody. Um, certainly some of our programs are very competitive and we do have to make selections and cuts. But each, each season, fall, winter, spring, there is something for everybody. So I certainly encourage your students as they get into high school um, to try and become a, a, a member of one of our programs. So just real quick, I'll just go through the offerings. Uh, in the fall, we offer boys soccer and girls soccer, boys and girls cross country. We offer girls volleyball. We offer golf. And we also have field hockey and football opportunities at other schools. Um, we don't have a field hockey or football program of our own, but we have cooperative agreements with other schools. So for field hockey, we're with Asabit, and for football, we're with Maine. Um, so those are our fall sports offerings. Fall sports typically have begun the second Thursday preceding Labor Day. The date has changed this year. The MI has changed the date. We're actually going to start the Monday, uh, the second Monday preceding Labor Day. Um, so we have a little bit less of the summer and a little bit longer of the fall going forward. Um, winter sports always begin the Monday after Thanksgiving and they run through mid-March. We offer boys and girls basketball, boys and girls indoor track, and boys and girls swimming. We also offer hockey co-ops. Our girls currently play at St. Peter Marion in Worcester and our boys currently play for Marlboro High. Um, unfortunately, the girls ice hockey co-op will be uh, folding at some point here in the near future. So we're, we'll be free agents. We'll be looking for a girls ice hockey co-op. So. If you're here at a school looking for girls ice hockey players, let me know. Um, spring always begins the third Monday in March. That's a typo, I apologize. Spring sports begin the third Monday in March. Our spring offerings are softball, baseball, boys and girls lacrosse. We have girls tennis, we have boys and girls track and field. And for tennis, we don't have our own boys program. Our boys uh, co-op at Marlboro High. Um, actually played for a Division One state title just two years ago. So um, again, I feel we have a very robust uh, set of offerings. There is something for everyone. I do want to stress that. We do have some uh, competitive teams where we have to make selections. But again, there's something for everyone. It's a great way to assimilate to, to our school, uh, to assimilate to the high school life. So I certainly encourage your students to look into becoming a member of one of our athletic programs. There's a, a lot of benefits to it. Um, I apologize. I'm going to run. I'm going to turn it over to the other department heads. If you guys have any questions at all about anything to do with athletics, please don't hesitate to send me an email, and I'll get right back to you as soon as possible. Thank you, guys. I'll pass it on. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, thank you, Pete. So I did not formally introduce myself. I know that we met at the uh, parent night, but I'm Mike Naraki. I'm the principal here at AMSA. This is my 10th school year here. Um, I figured I'd formally do that. I, didn't, I missed that at the beginning because I was in a rush. This is a quick quote uh, that came from one of our students, among many other uh, AMSA graduate quotes. Uh, but I think it really, really speaks to what we're all about here, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I think that, and I mentioned this at the 8th grade step up ceremony last year to, that, to those 8th graders at the time, and I really do believe that each and every year our 9th graders, uh, our rising freshmen, are the most well prepared freshmen in the state of Massachusetts. I firmly believe that 6th through 8th grade is quite challenging here. Uh, we offer an unbelievable uh, curriculum across the board and um, we have our students ready to go for high school. Uh, but we wanted to share that quote.
And uh, these are our AMSA graduation requirements. You can find these in our in our handbook for sure. Um, and this video is going to go out to uh, families who are not able to be here tonight, and we'll have the uh, slides in there as well. Uh, but you can easily find this in our in our school handbook. I'm not going to go through each and every one, but the main point here is that by the time a student graduates, they will have earned at least 28 credits. Um, that's that's the minimum. Uh, these are the requirements, and the, these do not include the elective courses. That the um, these are the bare minimum for each for each subject. Each student to graduate, they'll need to successfully complete the biology, MCAS in ninth grade, and they'll have to pass 10th grade math and English. And uh, just real quick about our leveling. Uh, course selection process, which Ms. Driver and Ms. Arico will be talking about toward the end of this presentation, that will be starting up on February 1st, uh, coming up on that. That's actually a Saturday around noontime. Uh, we will open up the registration process for the students to select their courses. Right now, the teachers are recommending students for their courses. The teacher end shuts down on February 1st. Student side opens up on the same day. Uh, we have college prep, commonly referred to as CP, honors and advanced placement, our college prep courses. Um, of course, they prepare our students. They're aimed at preparing our high school students for colleges and universities. Um, our college prep program, you know, what we do in our college prep courses here, I think, are, are at a higher level than you would find at some of our neighboring communities. They are challenging courses, for sure. Honors, things that may step up a little bit, or they do step up a little bit. More in-depth study, and it may require some more independent learning and greater effort. And AP, these are approved courses by College Board, the general oversight for um, AP classes. And we have, how many programs, 18 or 17? 17 AP programs right now uh, offered here at the high school level. Ninth grade students have biology as an option. Um, oh no, that's 10th grade. Ninth grade, there are no AP options. <laughs> never mind, never mind. No, that'd be 10th grade, 10th grade biology. Um, so these are our levels right here. Um, so you'll be looking at these first two as you are registering for courses. And next up, to kick off the, uh, we have the department chairs coming up. I think it might be math first. Yes, it is mathematics with Ms. Schmidt. Hi, hi everybody. Good evening. I'm Luba Schmidt. I'm the head of math department. And uh, math department more similar to what uh, our uh, principal already told you. Uh, we believe that thinking is the most enjoyable and the most important human activity. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what level and what course your child will be taking at AMSA. Believe me, they, they will be pushed, all of them will be pushed to think and to use logic. This is the most important thing in mathematics. <laughs> so um, we teach uh, algebra and geometry in ninth grade. And then uh, majority of students taking pre-calculus in 10th grade, calculus in 11th grade, and several electives in 12th grade. I will talk about electives a little bit later. Uh, some of our students are struggling with algebraic skills and we give them a little bit more time to study algebra because without algebra they cannot go and study more advanced courses. So this is where you, where you see some Algebra 1 uh, option and Algebra 3 option. So some of them are uh, reviewing Algebra 1 in ninth grade, and then moving to Algebra 2, and some of them need more than one year to study Algebra. So this is the option to study Algebra uh, 2 in two years, actually Algebra 2 and Algebra 3. So we divided it into two parts. Students uh, will be recommended by the current teacher um, to what to take in ninth grade, but attention, they can move diagonally and they do move diagonally, so if you will be recommended to take, for example, 
algebra 2 uh, in ninth grade, it means that you can go here or go here or maybe go here. Uh, some of the uh, diagonals movements uh, require, actually all of them require teacher's recommendation and some of them require some study during summer and some of them require taking uh, exam in August to move to the next level, but some of them do not. Sometimes we trust teachers and believe that if teachers believe in the student, we should believe in the student. So just have in mind that once again, you can move diagonal to the right, and some students move diagonal to the left. They, for example, in 11th and 12th grade, want to take um, easier courses, and it's okay as well. We kind of push them, of course, but we, um, kind of respect their, uh, their wishes and their goals, etc., etc. So uh, we believe that studying, cal uh, studying calculus in high school is the right thing to do. So we actually uh, have calculus, we teach calculus on five different levels. As you can see on this table, it is intro to calc, calculus honors, AP, AP calculus, BC calculus, and multivariable calculus. So majority of our students uh, introduced to some idea of calculus, and this is what we once again strongly believe that it is important because calculus is about change and changes uh, around us in all processes. So it is important to study how it works. <laughs> Uh, and we have a lot of other uh, electives in 12th grade. We have multivariable calculus. We have AP statistics and regular statistics, honor statistics. We have uh, linear algebra and differential equations. We have finite math and very um, popular accounting and business fundamentals course that my, many of our actually students like to take. Uh, we are really happy that um, many of our students in 12th grade actually taking two courses, two math courses. So we see it that kind of uh, testimony <laughs> that our students love, love math and it is once again the second most important thing for math department. <laughs> so they should love math. Okay, so questions. No questions? Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Ms. Welder. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Alex Waldron. I am the English department chair here at AMSA. Um, and even though this may be called the Advanced Math and Science Academy, there is a second not so well known name. You know what the name is. It is the AHA, or the Advanced Humanities Academy. Um, you took my line. We, ah, um, so <laughs> we like to think that um, even though we're not in the title, we take it very seriously that students will love the study of humanities, that they will love to read, that they will love to write. Goodness me, if they could love to write essays, that would be everything. So we spend a lot of time trying to train students to be good at it, but also to kind of enjoy it, to pick prompts that they enjoy. And I'm already seeing one face that says, uh-uh, that's not happening. Um, but it, it can, it, it's possible. Um, so we organize um, the grade levels, much like you've seen from six through eight, where we are mostly aligned with the history department. So where we can't do something historical, just because it doesn't match in terms of date, We'll do it by theme, so that they can use their cultural understanding and their context to apply it to the study of the text that we have. Uh, we take great care to choose things that we think will be challenging, but are also kind of aesthetically established. So things that um, one day when they're sitting around with a bunch of intellectuals, they can just roll out their knowledge of these impressive texts that they do actually love. Um, so, in grade 9 and 10, you can see that they don't have a lot of choice here. They'll be in either Honours or CP, and, and they'll just roll through the texts that we've chosen for them. Um, and the themes largely, you can see there, European Renaissance and World Literature, um, and then moving on further up chronologically through the ages. When they get to grade 11, this is when the choices start to open up. So in grade 11, they can choose AP Lit. Um, that's a very popular option. It kind of exploded recently after we did some marketing campaigns. Um, so hopefully word will spread and a lot of these people in here will choose to do it. 
Um, but we also cover in grade 11 another option of American Lit. It's a bit of a survey of that, which aligns as well with what history you're up to. When you get into grade 12, what we're trying to do is to mirror the choice that you'll get in college. Um, so we open it up for you. So there are three core classes you can choose. You can see them here as Shakespeare or Gothic or contemporary. They're all so different that it gives you a little bit of space to breathe and choose. But we also have AP Lang available in 12th grade, should you wish to take another AP. Um, it is possible for students to take two English courses, but we do say that it's not a great idea um, unless you are, in fact, totally dedicated to reading all the time um, and writing lots of essays. So it's usually just one per year. On the right, you can see the electives that we offer. Um, lots of those have been established and have been around a long time. Um, so creative writing and journalism and lit to film have been with us for many years. Um, something that's brand new though, you can see at the bottom, um, we are offering madness in literature for 10 through 12. Um, and the thin line that is trodden between madness and genius, or where that line moves, um, and the best part of that is it will be taught by Mr. Looney. <laughs> it's my favourite. Um, you, can, you can also study uh, philosophy and fantasy and science fiction. That's fairly new. That's in its second year. Um, that's an amazing course for anyone who's ever thought, I just wish Tolkien could be a thing that we actually learn about, that it's not just like a hobby thing. Um, and so we brought it into the classroom, along with lots of other sci-fi and fantasy. Um, you could be part of the Writing Centre Tutors when you get up into 10th grade as well. Um, and that's if you're interested in education at all, or just kind of mentoring, any of those things. Um, and if you're a great writer, you can teach some of the younger grades. Um, so that's a bit of an overview. Um, and if there are any questions, let me know. Oh, I have questions. Okay. Uh, yes? Uh, just so I understand, so um, ninth grade honors, let's say, European Renaissance and World Lit, can you also add creative writing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The question. The question was, what do I do if I want a combination of, I say I'm doing um, honours ninth grade, that's uh, straight English, right, core English, uh, what can I add as an elective with that? So um, most students then take one extra with that, so you could combine creative writing with it. Is there kind of, there's a scheduling? Okay, I don't want to stand on their toes, um, so, but they'll be able to explain what kind of combinations are physically possible with the scheduling for you. Was there another one? Yes. It is the year after. The question was about lit to film. Um, next year it is not on. It is in 2021. Yes. Anyone else? So, so the electives, they're together with the required or they are on top of it? Uh, so the question is, are the... Yeah, is there a, you have to take electives or is it... No. Um, so the question was, do, am I required to take any English electives in conjunction with my ordinary English? Um, you are not required to take any of those. Those are total choice. Um, although I'm sure the scheduling team will be able to tell you what um, some of the advantages are for choosing certain things in combination. Anybody else? Okay, have a wonderful evening. Oh, here we go. Dr. Dre, how you doing? Okay, so, so in ninth grade, your son or daughter is going to be taking biology either in CP or honors. We run biology in ninth grade, mainly because you've had three years of biology already, and we have the MCAS. So we want to get the MCAS out of the way, so then in 10th grade, you're not taking three MCAS courses, okay? Because in 10th grade, they're going to have to do math in ELA, and so we'll give them a break and do MCAS in the ninth grade. And we have a very, very, very good pass rate. Basically, we all pass. Tenth grade, you're going to chemistry. And you have a choice between sweet CP and honors, too. But then you can take advanced placement biology. Now, in the science department, AP classes are electives. They will not count for graduation requirement. So, you may take that. In 11th grade, we have physics, CP and honors, but then you'll have the availability of taking AP biology or AP chemistry. <coughs> and then the 12th grade, those who are really, really, really set on taking AP physics can do so in the 12th grade. And the reason why we run that in the 12th grade is because you really do need the calculus in order to be successful in that AP class. 
So we also have some other um, electives that we run. Anatomy and physiology is taught by a registered nurse that I have on staff. He does a fantastic job. We do also run environmental sustainability by Mr. Brandis. A new elective this year run by Ms. Tebow is Discovering New England. It's an ecology survey of New England. And then we have what we call science research, which is literally that. It is research that your son or daughter will do in the science field. And currently we have biochemistry, ecology, geochemistry, and microscopy. And these are exactly that. They're modeled after graduate level programs. And they'll have to present at a science night that I hold the first Tuesday in April. I'm gonna have to uh, develop a poster and they'll have to present it to the public, much like you would get at any science conference. And the idea is they're gonna have to tackle a problem that they can't Google and find the answer to, but they actually have to work at it, collect data, hypothesis, the whole nine yards, and then present it. So I have two slides, so I'll stop here. We can entertain some questions on the science department, if you wish. Questions? So I have a question which applies to all departments. Uh, CP and honors, do you select or are you placed in these classes? That's a really good question. And it, it, it differs by department. I mean, math department has very strong recommendations. Uh, science department has al also has very strong recommendations on that, where the teacher will recommend your son or daughter for a specific level. And I think guidance will be able to talk more about that as well. So I'm gonna push that up for that. So any other science? So if you take like biology, biology and the you're supposed to take physics, it doesn't come for the points for your graduation requirement, right? Absolutely not. Yeah, you're right. So basically, to, to graduate from AMSA, we set it up so that you have to take biology, chemistry, and physics at either an honors or a CP level to graduate. And that actually, that's, that's not my doing, that's the charter. The AMSA charter requires that. And we had to change to make it a full year course, that was the deal we struck with the board in the Department of Education. So you have to take physics one year? Absolutely. You can take it two years if you like. I'm sensing you really like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> so for the AP, they've got to take the actual test, which is the answer to get the college credit for it? Is, or how do they determine if they actually get the credit for it? I'm going to pass that off to guidance because it depends on the college. It's not us that gives you the college credit. The college credit will come from the institution your son or daughter goes to. And they, they can speak more about that, but we don't do that. We just, we give a grade, it goes on the transcript, and then college board will send that score to the college. But we don't, we don't give credit. There's no test for the There is a test, there is an AP test. We administer that through College Board. It's not very fun. <laughs> is there a recommendation for the science research in the junior year or the senior year, or is it guided by the guidance? So, um, yes and no. I, I really want to get students in in 10th grade. Um. Absolutely. And if you come in in 10th grade, it's a three-year program, and we have a really, really good track record with those students doing very well in the program and going into very good schools. Now, if in the 11th grade, you come in 10th grade, in the 11th grade, uh, 10th grade, you come in the 11th grade, you have to take some AP and you don't have time, you can come back in the 12th grade. But the only thing that cannot happen is you cannot just start in the 12th grade. There's not enough time. Can you start at 11th you, you can, you've got to be motivated because you've got to make a little time. So, so you so, well, yeah. I mean, there are some of us that get PhDs that did the same project for, for five years, sometimes 10 years. I mean, it's just, no, it, it literally is like grad school. 
and they've got projects. I mean, we've got CRISPR going on in molecular biology. We have um, a cancer research project we've got. They're not volcanoes at a science night. That, that's not the, what this is about. It's high level. Come to science night. You will see it. It's April 7th this year. Um, mine is not science related, but can you repeat the question so that the people at home can hear what the questions are? Possibly. <laughs> or moving forward. <laughs> Research project, do you give them guidance on where they can, like, what they can research, their, their topics, their ideas? Or do they have to come up with that? Okay, so the um, question was, do we give them guidance in research? It literally is modeled after grad school research. So you have an advisor, like, for instance, molecular biology is Mr. Ben Giovanni. You cannot come in and say, I want to do this. We have projects that are already running. You can join one of the projects and then you can kind of shift it to your interest as long as we can support that. I mean, biochemistry is a very intensive, very, very costly course. So I can't have kids, we have 20 something in there right now. They have to be all on the same track so I can afford the supplies because otherwise it just gets out of control. But the guidance is daily. We used to, so the question is, do they have to audition or can anybody join? And we, we run a survey in the spring of all the ninth graders to, to understand their aptitude. Then we ask them to write a little essay about what they want and why they want it. No one has ever been refused. But if your son or daughter says, oh my God, I really want to do ecology research with um, Mr. Lacutia, I love that, I want to do that. And then they put down on the survey that they hate being cold, they don't like being outside, they don't like being wet. They're not getting in that one, because that's what that's about. So just conversely, if they don't want to be in the lab, they're not going into molecular biology. So we kind of push them along the way to make sure that they're going to be successful with their choice, and it's not just a great word to have on a resume. All right, so CS, please. <coughs> Do you have any external collaborations with the program? So the uh, question was, do we have any external collaborations with the program? Over the years, we've had loads. We've had collaborations with MIT, Harvard. Currently, we're working a little bit with Quest. We've had other um, collaborations. But the reality is, I don't want collaborations with any outside institution because this is an in-house thing. So the students will work on it here. It's, it's for AMSA students, all AMSA students, who may not have the opportunity to go to UMass Medical or to Harvard or for Tufts. To, to, they don't make necessarily have the connections. That same research is done here for, you, for your students. All right, see us. So I'm also the chair of the CS department. So in grade nine, you've got a choice. You, know, you can either choose Intro to Java or Intro to Web Design. 10th grade, you can do Intro to Java, Advanced Web, APCS, or you can actually run Intro to Java again. That's not on the slide. And then in 11th and 12th grade is where it really starts opening up you could do uh, advanced CAD, um, APCS, digital media. Our claim to fame though was the data, data science and cybersecurity. And cybersecurity is so good we put it down twice. <laughs> that is a class that you have to be chosen to be in. We're not going to waver on that. It's not for everybody. You have to have a high degree of programming. And most of all, you positively, absolutely have to be of good character and mature enough to handle that class. Because you could wind up in a whole heap, heap of trouble with the skills that you would learn in that class. It is about security and defending a network. 
And in order to defend something, you have to know how to attack something. <laughs> I'm going to let you kind of on to that one. But by the time you get there, Mr. Ms. Fendauer does a fantastic job at preparing students. And it, it really is amazing what they can do. So questions on CS in the back. Yeah, so the question was, do we have plans to add intro to engineering? And we do have it, unfortunately. It's just not written. It's right here. So yeah, intro to engineering starts in the 10th grade. And then you can take advanced uh, CAT. It's not intro to engineering. It's, like it's intro to CAT is what we really want to call it. But you get the engineering principles in there. And then um, we start the program with the good old fashioned paper and pencil. So you gotta learn how to draft something. Then we move to a computer. And then, you know, we have a bunch of, I think we have five or six 3D printers now, all different types. And the students will have to uh, render their, their designs. And then in advanced CAD, you learn a little bit more. And then when we get to engineering, in either 11th or 12th grade, you, are building different projects. I know he's got his eyes, uh, Mr. Morris has his eyes set on a, a shed that they're trying to finish building. And uh, honestly, he's also taking over um, Intro to Robotics. And Intro to Robotics starting next year is shifting away from the VEX system. And we are going into a um, assembly line robotics system. It's uh, very segmented, and the kid, students will have to actually program and work together to design an assembly line process of, of making something. I mean, hopefully, it's going to start off with putting something in a box and color coding, but eventually, we're going to build on that. So yes, we have plans. We're doing it. We honestly got to teach them. We've got to get them a little bit more mature before we let them lose the power tools. So. Other questions? So I'm looking at, so the question was, was there any way to try web design in Java? I'd look over at uh, Ms. Driver, and she's not sure that we can do that. But you have Mr. Alvarez, right? He's going to be teaching web design. And it's basically taking it to the next level. And if you really like programming in HTML, then I would encourage you to take the Java class. I mean, strongly encourage you, because that's going to be run by um, <coughs> Ms. Benson. She's a great teacher, and she, she's going to prepare you for a lot of other things. Java is a really good step that you can take to get to just about anywhere, because you're going to learn the fundamentals of programming. And we, I know we talk about algorithm thinking all the time, but that's going to bring home. Um, so the question was, is Java more programming and, uh, or, and uh, web design more design stuff? I, I, on the face, I can't disagree with that comment. I think that that's fairly accurate. There's an enormous amount of programming in web design. I mean, you have a whole bunch of things you have to code. But it's your preference, and that's why we give you the choice. So go with Java. Any other questions? <laughs> Is there an option to do AP Computer Science in Grade 9? No. Sorry. Um, the question is, is there an option to do AP Computer Science in Grade 9? And no, no, there's not. There really is not. We don't even offer a competency test anymore because no one has ever passed it, period. We want the students to be successful. And in the Science Department, which is also a Computer Science Department, all AP courses are a two-year program, which is recommended by College Board, and it helps your students prepare. So if you do intro to Java, and maybe your son or daughter is a great programmer, and they can handle it, and they can do it, and I know they can, 
that extra year gives them just enough. And when they do that, then they can go on to this class here, because that's where you want your, your student to be. But if you circumvent that, it is impossible for me to ascertain your student's understanding of the subject, but most importantly, their maturity level. And Ms. Bondaro will not allow them to take those higher level classes. And we want them to take them. We do. I mean, in cybersecurity now, I have 26 students, with 26 more waiting to get in because they want to get in. So, yes, do this. Follow the, it works. This, this will be number, you're going into 16 years. We got this down, it works. We know what we're doing. Uh, all right, any more questions? Uh, so the AP Com size has to be taken in 10th and 11th both, or just 10th is good? Um, if your son or daughter wants, so the question was, does AP Com size have to be taken 11th or 11th, 10th and 11th? It depends on when they take the class. If so if, if your son or daughter takes it in grade 10, then they take the, the test in grade 10. If they want to wait and take it in 11th grade, that's fine, or even 12th grade is fine too. It, that's open. Um, all right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perry. I visited cybersecurity. I visited that class quite often. It was jam-packed. There are 26 students in there, as Dr. Duray mentioned. Two school years ago, I visited that class, and Ms. Mandaru asked the students to attempt to hack into the AMSA webpage. And within, I would say, seven seconds, a member of the class of 2018 uh, was in. It was in. And we, we addressed the issue, and it's now. <laughs> But that's the sort of um, that's the sort of education they get in there. It's a it's a great class. And we have Dr. Lewis coming up. No, no uh, microphone. I'll try to speak without a microphone. Is that can everybody hear me in the back? I hate microphones. Uh, so just really quickly, uh, as Ms. Walker said, uh, all the humanities uh, classes are generally structured, generally around uh, the history curriculum. Uh, and from the middle school to the high school, the history curriculum uh, roughly goes uh, chronologically. So uh, next year, your kids will be taking uh, world history from 1750 to the present. So that's going to cover uh, the events leading up to the French Revolution and then into the 1800s, uh, the Industrial Revolution, uh, imperialism, uh, World War I, World War II, and the Cold War, and the present day. Uh, so all students take uh, world history in grade 9. Uh, and then in grade 10 and grade 11, we have two years of U.S. history. So the first half of U.S. history goes up to, uh, we try to get uh, up to 1877, which is the end of the era of Reconstruction uh, after the Civil War. And then the second half of U.S. history in the junior year goes up from uh, Reconstruction to the present day. Uh, in grade 11. Uh, and then as you can see here, we have a number of electives and AP offerings. There are no AP offerings until uh, grade 10. When students are in grade 10, they can take AP European History or AP Macroeconomics. Uh, we also offer in 11 U.S. History and U.S. Government, and then in grade 12, AP Psychology. Uh, and these are the electives that we offer in the history department, government and economics, criminology, modern Africa, uh, hate the dark side of American history, uh, and then Indians and Outlaws, the Romance and Legacy of the American West. Your kids, your eighth graders, uh, what two electives, two electives that they can take that are open to ninth graders, and that is modern Africa, so that is a uh, an introduction to uh, Africa. It's taught by uh, Mr. Pru, a fantastic uh, teacher. It's designed to give students an introduction to African history, uh, beginning with the formation of African empires in the 1300s, 1400s, uh, then dealing with the uh, uh, European uh, colonization, the slave trade, uh, imperialism, and then uh, attempts at decolonization and uh, nationalism uh, in the 1900s. Uh, terrific class. Uh, and then the other 
elective that your students can take is uh, Hate the Dark Side of American History, which is uh, co-taught by Miss Murphy uh, and myself. Uh, and that is, that's a class that is designed, uh, it's, it's generally probably a better idea to wait a little bit to take that until you get to 10 and 11 when you have that background of US history. But you can take it in grade nine. Uh, and that is a class that is designed to look at um, the dark side of American history. Uh, so there's a lot of discussion about racism and nativism and sexism and homophobia uh, in that class. Um, so that is a very quick outline of history electives and classes at AMSA. Any questions? Yes? So the uh, European history, it's not going to be instead of US history. It's on top of it. Yes, you could take both. Yeah. But you cannot take instead. You still have to take U.S. history, even if it doesn't count as elective. The AP European history. Uh, Mr. Everett. That's that's correct. You so all sophomores have to take U.S. history either at the CP or the honors level, and in eleventh grade you can sub in AP U.S. history for for history two, but you everyone has to take year one. Yes. Do you know if there's any possibility of military history coming back at any point? Uh, not in the foreseeable future, no. So that's a good question. Um, next year, our electives will slightly change a little bit. So if you look, if you going ahead and looking at the course catalog on the AMSA website, we've put out a four-year plan for the history department, and essentially what we will be doing is trying to rotate our electives. Uh, every other year, so uh, these electives will not be off. These electives will be offered next year, and then the year the year following, we will have a different uh, selection of electives. Uh, you'll see history of sports, uh, history of China, uh, anthropology, uh, government, and economics will still be taught. Uh, that's a course that we want to teach every single year because we believe it is so important. Um, and then the year after that, these classes will then come back as well. So uh, when you are thinking about history classes and electives for your kids for next year, you know, do keep in mind that these will be returning, but not the next year. There'll be a different set of electives. Then. Yep. Yes. Does the U.S. history include a, a civics uh, lesson, I guess? In the oh, yes. So uh, th there is a lot of civics embedded in uh, the U.S. history uh, classes. Um, Certainly when we're talking about the Constitution and the formation of the American Republic, um, when we're talking about Reconstruction and the Reconstruction Amendments, uh, when we're talking about the Civil Rights Movement, there's a lot of civics embedded in it, but all of the history teachers feel that civics is so important. Uh, the responsibilities of citizenship, uh, what are the basic ideals of America, uh, what are our founding documents, so forth and so on, that we believe merits its own elective so that students who are interested in it, and we hope all students are interested in it, uh, can not only get it in our regular U.S. history classes, but they can also take our government and economics class, and if they're really uh, inspired, they could also take uh, AP government as well. Okay? Thank you. Very much. Ms. Press is up next. Hello everyone and welcome again. Uh, save the best for last, right? <laughs> okay, so I will be giving a brief overview of world languages. As you probably know, students here take Latin in the middle school. So your son or daughter at the end of this year can decide what they want to take next year, which is very exciting. They can either choose to continue on with Latin and they'll be recommended by their current eighth grade Latin teacher, Mr. Fuller, whether or not uh, they'll be placed in, in Latin 2 CP or 2 honors, or they can choose to take either French 1 or Spanish 1. So for students who choose to go um, to continue on with Latin, uh, again, they'll be taking Latin 2 ninth grade year, and then they have the ability to move all the way up uh, to their senior year with either Latin 5, uh, which is a mixture of CP and honors, or AP. And we do have a very um, robust Latin curriculum, and we have a, a good number of 
uh, AP Latin students every year. So uh, even, even the years when we have just one class worth of Latin two students, every year we have a, a section of AP Latin. We have a, a good number that um, continue on with that that are really passionate about it. So for students who choose to take either French or Spanish, again, they would begin uh, presumably at the level one um, in the ninth grade. We do have students coming in from other schools that, that can place into level two, so that does happen as well. Um, and so French and Spanish, we also offer uh, up to AP. So all three languages have AP offered and each year, well, I should say after, after level one for French and Spanish is when the CP and honors levels uh, begin. So in that, that first year one, uh, everyone is placed together. And um, yeah, so again, we have the uh, CP and honors I wanna mention too, that um, for, for Latin and, and French in particular, uh, those oftentimes CP and honors are mixed which makes it especially easy to move up or down levels. Um, and uh, although only two years of world language are required, uh, almost everyone here takes at least three years and a, a very good portion of our students take, take four years. So, um, I mean the vast majority, I'm sure that guidance could tell you the numbers on that, but certainly uh, many colleges look for at least three years of a uh, world language. Uh, something else I wanted to tell you about is that this year we are launching the State Seal of Biliteracy Initiative. So you may have seen some, hopefully, uh, emails and uh, communications about that. And that is an exciting statewide initiative uh, in which we recognize students who speak another language whether it's a language that we, that we teach here at AMSA or any, any other language that they may speak at home. And so we are offering a test in various languages in early March, actually on that, that half day and that afternoon. And if students score at least uh, intermediate high in that language, then, and as well as uh, proficiency on the English MCAS, which pretty much all of our students do, then they would uh, receive the, the, the Biliteracy State Seal on uh, their high school diploma. So that's something that we're, we're launching this year. And we will continue to do that every year. And I think it's a great way to, to recognize our, our students' many linguistic abilities because oftentimes we have students, we may not even know that they, that they speak um, a second or even third language at home. So it's a nice way to recognize that. Sorry, yeah. It is a combination. So it is speaking, uh, reading, writing, and listening. So all four, all four components. Yep. So let's see if I've touched on. Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to mention for world languages. Does anyone have any questions about that before I move on to fine arts? Okay, I'll go there first. Yeah. Okay, so basically that's just letting you know that in, for honors, um, Latin four, the, the focus is prose. Um, oh, and I should also mention, thank you for asking that, and I forgot to repeat the question. <laughs> My apologies. The question was, what is Latin for prose? Um, that also reminds me that for all three languages, uh, the prerequisite to AP is honors the, the previous year. So for Latin, uh, for honors would be the prerequisite for AP Latin, and then for AP Spanish and AP French, the level three honors would be the, the requirement. Yeah. So what is the difference between honors and college prep? So for world languages, the, the main difference in, in an honors class the more of the class is conducted in the target language, and you also delve more deeply into the material and move at a faster pace. That's the, the, the primary difference between the two. Uh, yeah? So you mentioned, I know it's common in high school because of numbers that the sections might be combined for college <laughs> prep and honors. Mm -hmm. How is that differentiated for kids if there are some kids who need more instruction in the target language and other kids that would benefit from you know, some reinforcement? Mm -hmm. Okay, good question. So the, the question is, 
Um, if CP and honors levels are mixed in some cases, how do we differentiate? And so first, um, again, it depends on the number of students that are signed up for a particular section. It depends on the scheduling logistics, whether we would have the sections combined or separated. Um, but if in the, in the case where we have a combined level of CP and honors, uh, I can tell you, for example, with French, uh, Madame Zobro is a phenomenal teacher and she is extremely skillful at differentiated instruction. And there are, so for, if students that are in CP uh, would take different assessments than, than students that are in, at the honors level. Um, there are extension activities that students can do for the, the students that are particularly advanced. And um, something that also that we're looking to uh, do next year, not just in our department, but other departments, is to have TAs. So to have uh, a, a student, that's a, a junior or a senior, who can um, facilitate a, a class such as that, where we have a mixed CP and honors, honors level. But, um, you know, certainly there, and there, there's a lot of PD professional development opportunities as well offered to teachers who maybe need um, some additional instruction around differentiated instruction. Yes? Uh, do students have the opportunity to try something in ninth grade and decide that they want to move into the level one of another language? Mm -hmm. Do they have that opportunity? So the question is, uh, do students have the option of, if they pick one language uh, their freshman year, then switching over to a different language a later year? And yes, they do have that option, and uh, we certainly have students who do that. Um, so you would certainly, if, if you were to take, let's say, um, I can think of a student who you know, took uh, Latin during ninth grade and then decided that she wanted to take Spanish after that. So she moved over and, and did Spanish one during her 10th grade year. The only thing is, if in order to she wouldn't be able to, you know, get up to AP unless she, uh, she or he, were to study independently and um, over the summer or, um, you know, on the side to try to make up that extra material. And we have had students do that. Uh, and I should say also that we have had students who, and currently we have have some students right now who are taking two languages which although it can be difficult to do, uh, it is absolutely, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So right now we have a student who is actually in both AP Spanish and AP French. He's a multilingual student, really talented. Uh, we also have a student this year who is in both AP Spanish and French 3 honors. So certainly there's, there is a way of taking more than one language and of switching to a different language. You just would, it would involve a more lengthy conversation with guidance and also with me, but absolutely can, can work through it. Uh, yes? So in ninth grade, are you only allowed to take one language? It's probably difficult to take more than that. Yeah. yeah. Fit, which we'll talk about. Okay. We'll talk about it. Yeah. So in, for the college, you need three years of the foreign language. Does it have to be the same language or does it have to be Good, good question. So two years are required. Most colleges look for three years and they look for um, the, same, the same language. So three consecutive years in the same, the same language. Yeah. Yes, uh, sir? For Latin, they are learning now so they know what they are into, or what French and Spanish. For students who doesn't know what they're getting into, how do we let them know, hey, this is what you might get into before even they take it? So. How, how, how can that happen? Right, so the, the question is basically how do students decide uh, whether French, Spanish, or Latin is, is the, the right fit for them? And you're right, it can be difficult. I think that it depends on your, your son or daughter's professional and academic interests, and certainly there are benefits to all three languages. Um, I would say that you know Latin um, certainly is a great way to continue to build their their vocabulary in English and 
certainly if they're going into law, uh, all the, the legal terms that are in, in Latin and science terms, and you know, each each language has sort of its own uh, benefits. And I would I would say, to, I would be happy to, to speak with with you uh, if if you're unsure. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm more focused like you know, how would the student know whether they like it or not. You know, it's, it's the benefits. Okay, there are mm -hmm. attached benefits, but you know, if they don't know until they get into it, they took French, and after mm -hmm. a month and a half, they say, oh, okay, this is not something that I want to, but they can't switch right away. So I just wanted to see how can we let them know, hey guys, this is some, this is what you're going to go. So through. something that we have also done uh, is in the spring we've had students, we've had upper level students in each language go to the directed studies to uh, talk about, to present, you know, why they, they picked their particular language, what they've liked about it, uh, and that's something that can be helpful uh, for students. And, you know, in an ideal world, we would maybe, the, we would present each language a little bit in the middle school and, yeah. and would expose them more and they would have a better sense, but it's just, it's really hard to do that with our, with our schedule. Yeah, thank you. But. Yes? So, yeah, so the question was what happened to Mandarin? Uh, we, so we tried, we wanted to offer Mandarin this year uh, as an elective. It, so the, the, it was in the course catalog last year and it was open to juniors and seniors. We had 18 students sign up. We were hoping to have more students sign up so that we could run two sections. The problem is that trying to find someone who can teach one section of Mandarin on a rotating schedule is really difficult. So it just, um, unfortunately, we don't have anyone in our staff who can teach the course, and so it's it's just it it was just um, tricky to, to to find someone who could do that. I, we certainly were hoping to make that work, but that's unfortunately what happened. At one point, several years ago, we actually had a teacher who uh, was fluent in Spanish and also. Uh, quite fluent in Mandarin, and that was amazing. <laughs> Fortunately, we no longer have that option. But certainly, we we will continue to keep that as uh, a potential option moving forward. But unfortunately, not for this next year. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Are there online resources, maybe, um, like course syllabus or course organization presentation? kids can go to the parents for the selection Oh, oh, so how you can get information about these classes? Right. Yes, so you can uh, refer to the program of studies. It will have the course description for, for each one of these. Thank you. Yes? For students who've already had like, a year of Spanish, mm -hmm. why are coming to answer? Did you say there was some sort of test? Yes, absolutely. We, so we offer a placement test so that uh, students can be assessed to determine whether they would place into level two. And that's something every year we have, we have ninth graders that are in, that are in level two. And actually um, something that, that we do to enable students to take uh, four consecutive years, let's say that, that they are, are placed in ninth grade in level two. What they can do is take, so let's say they're in Spanish two as a ninth, grade, ninth grader. They can take AP Spanish their junior year, and then the Spanish 4 CP 4 honors class is also called Film and Culture. So on their transcript, it would it would appear as Film and Culture, and so that you know would come up as Spanish 4 after AP. So we, we do make it work for, for students who start in level two. Any other questions? Very good. Okay. Oh yeah, I got art too. <laughs> Not quite done. <laughs> okay, so here are the um, fine arts. I'm also the department head for, for fine arts. So, and I should mention that tomorrow night is arts night. We hope to see you there. <laughs> uh, so tomorrow night we have 
uh, both visual and performing arts uh, happening, and we'll have our art exhibit in the White Building starting at 5.30, and then here in the Upper School Cafeteria at 6.30, we will have uh, various groups performing, chorus, acapella, jazz band, and drama. So we hope to see you tomorrow night. And so for fine arts, uh, students, it's, it's great because students have a number of choices, um, a number of electives, and some of these courses are offered every other year, which is a nice way of, of giving our students, again, more choice. Um, 3D art is a very popular course that's offered every year. Chorus um, with our fantastic uh, Mrs. Bowen, and that is a course that can be repeated. Choice-based art is going to be a new uh, elective offered next, next year. Drawing and painting uh, is a class that is uh, the prerequisite for AP, and that is offered every year. Uh, and then we have a, f a few more classes that are offered every other year, multicultural art, myth and art, uh, and printmaking. Those are all offered every other year. And Western Art Masterpieces is um, essentially an art history course, and that is also recommended, although not required, for AP. Uh, digital Media is a class that uh, is offered to juniors and seniors and students can, uh, it can go towards fulfilling either a computer science or a fine arts credit, depending on uh, what students need. Uh, and that is a class that is co-taught um, by a computer science and a, an art teacher. So this year, um, Mrs. Monica Benson, Mr. John Morgan are teaching that. That's a, a very cool collaborative class. And then last, well not lastly, there's, I should mention yearbook before going into AP art uh, yearbook. It does not fulfill your, your fine arts requirement, uh, but certainly it's a, an interesting elective that you can take, and you can repeat the course if you are an editor. Otherwise, you're not, you're not allowed to repeat that. And then uh, lastly, AP Studio Art. That is uh, by teacher recommendation, and you would submit a portfolio to the teacher, Ms. Makinen, um, and meet with her individually to get into that class. And that is the one class that is one credit that meets every day. Yes? Are required or any? So there's a requirement. Right, right. So the requirement is two. One, 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 one that's right. One credit, yeah. but it's right. essentially two, two yeah. and a half yeah. credits, so two years is where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes? How many credits do we need for art? Yeah, so it's, so it's one credit, so how many credits do they need for art, and it's one credit, but, but that would be two years, because it's a half credit for each class, because it's not like you would start with AP. <laughs> so, any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Again, I hope to see you tomorrow night at uh, our Winter Arts Night. Thank you. Uh, before we go on, just a friendly reminder to everybody, the program of studies is actually posted on our site. I believe we sent an email about it maybe a month or two ago. Uh, but program of studies is on our on our homepage under academics. It's all updated for you. And that will give you a description of every single offering uh, that we have. So definitely keep that in mind. That will also go out when we open up the registration process. We're going to be sending out a notice to all 8th through 11th grade families who will be students will be registering for courses and we will also include that along with a, plenty of other information to help you with the process. Now we're moving on to counseling, I'm guessing, right? Yep. All right, here's Miss Arrigo. You going first? Okay, Miss Arrigo. Hi. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Joanna Arrigo. I've had the privilege of being with your students since they started here, so it's very exciting to be getting them ready for high school. Um, so I know you guys have taken in a lot of information over the last hour and you're already thinking about what your kid's senior year looks like, but I'm going to bring it back to just thinking about what the process is going to look like right now. Um, I will be going into your student's English class Monday through Wednesday next week. I will be talking to everybody about what the process looks like. So those of my eighth graders who are here right now, you're already a little bit ahead of it and I'll go into some more specifics then. Um, starting on February 1st, as mentioned, um, it will open up for students to be able to start to register for courses. I will be offering um, the week after, so the week of February 3rd, and then half the week after that, because it's due on February 12th, um, students will have the opportunity to make 10-minute appointments with me if they feel like they would like to discuss 
um, what courses they're taking, you know, just run it by somebody um, besides their parents before registering. Um, that won't be required, but it's just an, you know, another resource because I know it's a new process for everybody. Um, and this year, teachers will be entering recommendations for courses in math, English, biology, and history. So that's that CP honors. The teachers are going to be making those recommendations. So that will already be in there for students to see. Um, and then next year, we want students to take a minimum of seven credits, um, but we recommend seven and a half credits. So we recommend in addition to computer science, um, which I know are electives, but we want students to get their computer science, it's three half credits, 1.5 credits over the course of their high school experience. So we'd like them to get started in ninth grade with getting a lot of these requirements out of the way. Because for example, some of these AP classes that are offered, if you think about in the sciences, those are gonna take a full credit in addition to the science they're already taking. So if they have some goals of doing some of these other courses, you wanna make sure they're not stuck senior year where they have all these other courses that are available to them and that they're interested in. You don't want them to be saying, well, I can't graduate if I don't take an art. So we really would like them to get their computer science and their art requirement done during their freshman year. Which means that while it is open and available to take some of the English or history electives, we're really gonna be encouraging your students to get ahead with these requirements. Um, the reason we say 7.5 is we do want them to have a study hall. There is no directive study this year, next year. So they're used to having every single day that 45 minute block. At the very least, we want them to have that every other day study hall. Um, getting adjusted to high school is a lot, there's more homework. Um, so it can be really overwhelming if somebody tries to fit in a full eight credits their freshman year. Um, so seven credits would be a study hall every day. So if a student decided, you know what, I'm feeling kind of nervous about my first year, I wanna have plenty of time, I'm trying to get involved in a lot of clubs and sports, I'm not sure about the time after school yet, I'm gonna defer taking an art for my freshman year, I'm gonna take a study hall every day, that is an option. Um, and that's something, like I said, in those 10 minute meetings, that's something that I can discuss with your students. So if they're kind of on the fence and, and trying to figure it out, we can talk about you know, some planning. And um, counseling has actually this year been developing some kind of planning worksheets to help students look and say, what am I involved in? In the course um, selection manual, one thing that's really nice is it actually gives a homework estimate for each class. So it gives an estimate, this is the amount of hours per week you can expect. So we can have, we can really start to take a look and say, what kind of time do I have after school? Um, which gets really important too, as you go forward choosing courses later in high school to think about, do I have time to take you know, three AP classes my junior year with the amount of homework required? Um, so, any questions before I pass it off to Ms. Driver? Okay, so my name is Kate Driver. I'm the Director of School Counseling and I'm here to represent the folks who are going to be working with all of your students for the next four years and we're really excited to get to know them. So this is an example of what a ninth grade schedule might look like based on all of the information that you've heard from my lovely colleagues over here. We are assuming in this case, the student opts to take computer science and art. They end up with seven and a half credits and one study hall. Okay, so students, um, there's a fair amount here that's just plain old required. And it's not really up for debate. Um, so as much as there are choices that begin to open up in ninth grade, and it's really important for them to start thinking about that, there's still a fair amount in ninth grade that um, they don't have a lot of different options for. And that's just kind of the way that a lot of high schools work. Um, so yeah, I think we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So a couple of things to consider. Prerequisites. Um, again, we'll be sending out some planning forms to you. One of those will actually be a four-year planning form. So if you want to get really jazzy, you can start looking at junior and senior year. But as students begin to think about AP classes that they're interested in, if you are a student that wants to take AP Computer Science as a sophomore, guess what? You need to sign up for Java. So it's really important to begin looking at some of those prerequisites for the later courses so that your student is making choices in ninth and 10th grade that set them up for where they'd eventually like to go. Um, time and stress management is really important. 
Ms. Rico already talked about that a little bit. The homework estimates are really, really helpful. Again, it, it's always a little bit different when you get into the class. That's not necessarily every day, every week, but just to get an idea of what are we talking. Um, so please use that, that um, information. We also really encourage involvement in the in high school in extracurriculars. Extracurriculars that really mean something to the student. So it's good for students to start, start thinking about what do they want to be involved in? What do they care about? It's not about having a resume that is a mile long. We really want to see um, depth and demonstrated interest in the things that matter to your students. Um, there are lots and lots and lots of clubs available at the high school level, so you will hear much more about that as they as they join us up here. Um, ninth grade, I, we, I put counts in um, parentheses, er, parentheses. Oh goodness gracious, it's been a long day. Quotation marks for two reasons. Number one, we start counting credits. So students earn credits. They have to get a certain amount of credits to graduate. That means they need to pass the classes that they're enrolled in to earn that credit. They have to get 28 credits to graduate from here, in addition to the MCAS requirements. So it counts in that fashion. The other way that it counts, and this isn't to freak anybody out, but the reality is um, it's not that lower school hasn't mattered. It's super important. But your lower school report cards don't really go many other places than you, maybe private schools if you're applying to private schools. Other than that, they're really not, they're not going anywhere. But grades in ninth grade, that information does eventually get sent to colleges. So again, that those wise course choices, making sure that students are spending their time on the things that matter the most to them is super important up here. So we try to encourage kids not necessarily to take honors or AP everything just because they were recommended. If you love history and you want to take AP there, definitely do it. But it doesn't mean you have to do it everywhere if you don't want to be spending your time outside of school doing, say, AP bio work and picking on everybody. Um, so again, just make wise choices as you go through the process. I think I might have one more. Um, just a quick little pitch about what's coming up in high school. You have had a lot of different experiences through our lower school counseling curriculum. At the high school, we have a ninth and 10th grade seminar that we will be, that we're running. We're actually piloting it this year. We have between six and eight lessons, depending on the grade, looking at some basic career development, um, and then some social emotional skills. So helping um, students understand how to advocate for themselves, um, how to be good friends. So we do a little bit of that work in ninth and 10th grade. And then in 11th grade students, 11th and 12th grade students can utilize, um, we have a lot of college visits that come in the fall to AMSA to begin to meet college representatives. We have a junior seminar and a senior seminar. We meet with students and talk more about their college plans during the junior and senior year. So that's all coming. Um, but you know, as we're here to talk about our curriculum, that is the curriculum that we run through the counseling department. Our department actually teaches about 400 blocks a year, which is a fair amount for a counseling department. That's, um, I think, a little different than other high schools. Um, we do a winter junior parent night, and then we do a fall financial aid night for grade 12 students. So. Um, I have, a, I think there are a couple of questions that I wanted to answer and then I'll take some other questions. So there was a question early on about AP credit. Um, so students who take an AP course take the AP exam if they'd like to and I would say 99% of our students sit for the AP course at the end of the course that they've taken. That happens in May, the same year that they take the course. It is up to individual colleges, A, whether or not they will award credit um, whether or not they will use the course for placement. So some schools that don't offer credit will say, well, if you got a three or above, you don't have to take English comp. You can opt into something else, but they're still gonna take that tuition money because you still have to hit their general credit number. Um, then there are other schools that, um, you know, they'll only accept fives. So you, you get a one through five score. So it really depends and it's up to each college. Um, students, as long as they pass the course with their letter grade here, they earn our course credit regardless of their AP score. Um, scores don't come out until July. Um, so I was going to answer that one and then I think we talked about foreign language. Yeah, board language, the, our graduation requirement is two years of the same language. So even if a student takes French one, if they change their mind, they have to make sure that they're still getting one and two in another language. So again, that's why it's thinking pretty hard about making that language choice is important. Um, I think those were the only, is there another guidancey question from when you were up, Scott? I think I covered it. Okay, other questions for me? Yes. Each student get assigned a counselor, like 
know, yes. starting ninth grade, and they are the same house there. So it's a little different up here. We, yes. Oh, thank you. I'm terrible at that. Repeating the question: Does each student have the same counselor in grades nine through twelve? Um, we've had a couple of different models here. At this point, we have students that work with a counselor for ninth and tenth grade, and then they move to a new counselor for eleventh and twelfth grade that's much more college focused. That's kind of based on the the talent and personalities that we have here now. Um, so that's where we've ended up at this point. Yeah, and that seemed to work pretty well, but. A 9 through 12 model has other advantages too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is there going to be GPA starting? Yes. So GPAs begin to are computed at the end of every year. They're based only on final grade. Um, the eventual transcript that goes out only has final grades for 9th, 10th, and 11th, and then we do report each quarter of high school or uh, pardon me of, of senior year because that's what colleges need from us. Um, but it's only that end of year grade that is computed in the GPA. And there's a chart in the student handbook that goes over the GPA calculation. Is there honors and college placement have different GPA scales? Uh, so there, we offer weight for honors classes and AP classes. Yeah, so our honors classes are weighted an extra 0.5% in the GPA calculation, and the AP classes are weighted an extra point, but that doesn't change the grade. Like, if you get an A in CP, it shows up as an A on your transcript. If you get an A in honors, it shows up as an A on your transcript. It doesn't, it's not like, oh, well, I got a B in honors, so it gets marked as an A, you know, which is a question we do get sometimes, but that GPA is different. Um, Dirty little secret, most colleges recalculate GPAs anyway so that they can compare kids from everywhere. So we always offer only the weighted GPA, but they often do what they want with it anyway. So thinking about you know, getting good grades is important regardless of what level the students are in. We encourage them to take the most difficult course of study that they feel apt, ready to handle based on all their other, the other things that they're doing. Yeah, yes? I have a question about the math. Um, cycling back if possible. So on one of the slides up there, you had as a sample, like breakdown of all the credits. Sure. Um, there was algebra for one and a half and geometry for a half. Yes. Are they required to take both in ninth grade? Yes. This is my question. Yes, yep. they require to take both. Yep. So the question was, are students required to take both algebra and geometry in ninth grade? And the answer is yes. <laughs> and there are multiple levels for each one. But yes, everyone will be taking. Yeah, but they effectively have two two credits worth of math in ninth grade, which is how they get to that six at the end, because it's we require four years but six credits, so that's how they get there. It's a good question. <laughs> Other? Um, do do you have, is there a follow up question? There can well, be. I'm not I'm not math savvy, so full disclosure, I wouldn't have made it here. But um, <laughs> me neither. It's cool. <laughs> but. Uh, like for me, I see six credits required for graduation. Wouldn't that break down then to one and a half credits for four years? It, it would accept that different things are worth different credits once you get a little farther up the scale. So students are required to take a one and a half credit and a one credit in their ninth grade year. So they get two credits done and then some students take one and a half and one and a half and one, I think, if I'm doing my addition right in my head. Um, whereas other students continue to take one and a half credits all the way through. So often we, we have a surprising amount of kids that graduate with more math credits than six, okay. which is awesome. Yeah. Great question. Anybody else? Yes? More math credits are good. It all depends on what you like to do. You need six. Um, the question was, so more math credits are good, and again, I come back to it. It's, it's all about how you want to spend your time. Ms. Schmidt says yes. And talk to Mr. Rico. Ms. Schmidt says yes. <laughs> <laughs> the AHA might have a different, uh, <laughs> the Advanced Humanities Academy says boo. But again, like, it's, it's really about honoring what you want to be doing in high school. Other questions? All right, I, my email is on the website, so if you think of anything when you get home, please feel free to email me and I'll get back to you. All right, I believe that's it. I wanted to mention one thing before we go. Can we go through this slide? All right, we're good. Uh, I just want to mention, we, we uh, this is not really related to the uh, curriculum per se, but 
Last, this current year that we're in right now, for the first year ever in the school's history, we did have a ninth grade orientation day, which uh, was scheduled the same day as our sixth grade orientation day. So ninth graders sort of had an extra day of school this year. Uh, believe it or not, we surveyed last year's eighth graders and asked them if they thought that that day would be beneficial. And we also surveyed the parents. And they, uh, the student survey actually was more, the majority of the students actually embraced the idea of a ninth grade orientation. So we will be, um, we will be running that again and probably for all future years to come. Ninth grade orientation day, which would start one day earlier than the uh, first scheduled day of school where all the other students come back. And on that day, we focus on time and stress management, um, you know, how to manage your, your caseload, your course load, uh, things of that nature. And also we introduce, uh, I think we had pamphlets of all the 48 clubs that we offer here at the school. Uh, it's a nice day. It's not a, just a dry run through the schedule. It's more of, you know, what it, what's titled as an orientation, getting the students prepared. So we do spend an entire day with ninth grade. They are the only ones in this in this building that day. So it worked out very well. It was very well received. So please keep that in mind. More information uh, to come on that uh, as we move throughout this year. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Does anybody have any last minute questions? Because I do want to let the uh, department chairs, I want to cut them loose and let them go home. Um, anybody have any pressing questions they'd like to ask any of the department chairs? And I'll, I'll be hanging around a little bit after if you have any questions about ninth grade in general, about the orientation, for example, that I just brought up or any other things we're trying to do. Okay, we got one. So the question was, if, if you're a ninth grade student and you take intro to Java, what would you recommend for 10th grade? It, it depends. If you like Java, take EP Java or APCS, is what we technically call it. If you hate it, something else. I mean, the goal in computer science, it's a credit and a half that you have to take. We only want your student to be excited about computer science and want to take it further. That's it. I mean, I would love for all of them to get to a very advanced level, but as you see with our faculty, we have a diverse faculty that don't necessarily embrace math and science, but they embrace their own unique disciplines. So I don't agree with that. <laughs> no, we, we take what you want. We want you to be happy. That's, that's the bottom line. Take what you want. Dr. Dre is very straight to the point. <laughs> yes. I have a question real fast. Um, yeah. It's twofold. So, what, as a prospective parent, what are two things that AMSA, the high school here, does really well? Like your, your elevator pitch, right? And then, when the faculty and administrators get together, what, what do you guys talk about in terms of opportunities for improvement, or what's on your mind? As wow, that's a great, that's like, I feel like I'm on an interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Iron was taking a stab at that one. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about that. So the question was, what do we do really well, and what are we working on? Yeah. Which is also like my favorite interview question when I'm interviewing people. So um, I, I think that we do a great job as a faculty making connections with students. That's something I hear all the time from students, from every survey we give them, from every conversation I have with students. I ask every senior or every junior um, to tell me about their favorite courses, and inevitably, they end up writing about their favorite teacher. They don't write about their favorite course, um, even though the question is, what's your favorite course? Um, so I think that those faculty connections are really, really special here. So I think that makes us stand out. Hopefully you guys feel the same. I do think one thing that all of our department chairs and all of our administrators really pay attention to is data. Uh, we surveyed the, the entire student body last year, for example, and asked them about their academic life, their emotional lives, or social lives here at school, and we respond to that data. It's one of the reasons why we have the change to the school schedule this year. We have students getting out at 2.45 p.m. rather than 3.15 p.m. Um, this is we're, we're constantly looking at student performance in the classroom, uh, MCAS performance, uh, performance in general, and we're making constant adjustments. All of the curriculum, all the curricula that is developed here, they are all living documents. Uh, teachers all have a say in what's going on, and, and in the end, the students really do as well, because uh, like Dr. Gray was saying, they survey, they survey students all the time. I know that they do a math, they do it across the board, and the students are not really, they're not liking a subject, so why are we gonna continue to offer it? If they wanna see something new, um, we, let's find a way to make it happen. 
On that survey that we gave the students for 8th through 12th grade last year, uh, so the, the, your students, the 8th grade students actually received a different version, but we did survey all students in grades 8 through 12 last year. There were 138 pages of comments uh, that we took into account, and that helped us um, that helped us make a lot of decisions. So we're constantly seeking feedback from, from you as parents, from students. Uh, I think that's one thing that we do very well. We're, we're here, you know, we're, we're in the, whether we like it or not, we're, um, I, I like it. I think we're in the customer service business. You are our customers, your students are our customers, and we need to make sure that you guys are happy. Otherwise, the school won't exist, right? Uh, though it is not really my place to say, but <laughs> I believe our humanities will appreciate it uh, that I am saying that. You are uh, actually sending students to Math and Science Academy, and you obviously expect and you will get a really good Math and Science education. But at the same time, I believe our school is absolutely unique because we have absolutely the same strength of our humanities courses. And uh, not only they strong, but they show that uh, humanities subjects are connected, which you will not get from actually a regular high school. Usually, humanities departments are kind of uh, separated. Our humanities department are uh, working, and you've seen that uh, Ms. Waldron uh, talked about connection to history, between history and literature, and this kind of things you will get from, from Amsa. It actually reminded me, uh, we, unlike your traditional um, public schools, are not confined to the Massachusetts curriculum frameworks. We can go far above and beyond that and be very creative and offer uh, different opportunities for our students. So that's one advantage that I, I believe charter schools charter schools have. So some of our subjects and some of the, the depth that we get into here at the school and all the subjects across the board uh, may not necessarily be offered at, at other high schools around here. I will let, so department chairs, you guys are free to go. Parents, students, the young ones who show up tonight, I, we really appreciate your time. Hopefully you have a great late dinner tonight. Enjoy it, we'll see the students in a couple hours. Not too <laughs>